So here's quite a fun integral for you to think about. What's the integral of cosine x divided by sine x plus cosine x uh, from 0 to pi over 4? Well, this is a really interesting integral. It's not at all obvious what the right steps should be. In fact, you might be tempted to say something like, let's let u be sine x, and let's try to use integration by substitution. Well, if I let u be sine x and I differentiate this, then I'm going to get cosine x, and that's certainly going to help me deal with the numerator. But how do I deal with the denominator? I've got sine x plus cosine x. Well, I can just replace this sine with u, as I just said. But what about cosine x? I mean, I'm going to have to use some sort of trigonometric identity, and things might, get, might start getting very, very complicated very, very quickly. So there's got to be a better way to do this, and there is actually a very nice, elegant way to do this. And I'm going to show you how. So here's what we do. Well, first things first, I'm going to let i, so capital I, I'm going to let that be the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of cosine x divided by sine x plus cosine x dx. And you might be wondering, why on earth am I doing this? Well, first of all, I'm letting i be this thing, so obviously I want to find out what the value of i is. Well, now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set up a very similar integral. So I've let i be this thing. Now I'm going to let j be the integral from 0 to pi over 4, pi over 4, of sine x divided by sine x plus cosine x dx. So these, this i and j looks very, very similar to the integral I already have. Um, j is exactly the same as the integral above it, except I've got a sine here instead of a cosine. So how does this help me, or what can I do? Well, how can I use i and j to tell me something about my original integral? Well, first of all, notice something interesting. Well, I've got i and j right here. Well, I can add and subtract linear combinations of these things. So what happens if, say, I take i and add it to j? So what's i plus j? i plus j. Well, obviously, it's going to be some integral from 0 to pi over 4. Well, the denominators of these two integrands are just sine plus cosine. They're exactly the same. So I can just add these as regular fractions. So on the numerator, I'm going to get cosine x plus the sine of x all divided by the sine of x plus cosine of x dx. Well, you notice that I've got exactly the same thing in the numerator and denominator, right? Cosine plus sine is exactly the same as sine plus cosine. So this whole integral just cancels to 1. So this is the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of the integral of 1 dx. And obviously the integral of 1, that's just x. So my integral is just x evaluated from 0 to pi over 4. Well, when I substitute in pi over 4 into this, I'm going to get pi over 4. And I substitute in 0, I'm obviously going to get 0. So pi over 4 minus 0 is just pi over 4. So that tells me that pi over 4 is the value of i plus j. So that's quite interesting. I was able to calculate a sum of these two integrals, but not these integrals individually. So now what can I do? Well, I've done i plus j, so surely it makes sense to try another combination. Let's try instead i minus j, and let's see if that helps us in any way. So what is i minus j? Well, i minus j, that's the integral from 0 to pi over 4. Well, you remember that i was just the integral with cosine at the top, so that's the integral of cosine x minus sine x, because j has the integral with sine on the top, all divided by sine x plus cosine x dx. Well, what can I do now? Well, first you might notice something very interesting. Notice that if I take sine x plus cosine x and I differentiate it, then I'm going to get exactly what's on the top. So if I say that in, if I write that down, uh, if I look at the derivative with respect to x of sine x plus cosine of x, what is that? Well, the derivative of sine is just cosine, and the derivative of cosine is just minus sine. And what do you know? That's exactly what I've got in my numerator. So what I've got is I've got the derivative of a function 
divided by a function, and I want to try and integrate that. Well, it turns out we actually know how to do that. So if you recall, um, let's do this in a different color. You recall that if I've got the integral of f prime of x divided by f of x, and let's assume that this function has no zeros, um, and if I take this integral with respect to x, then that's just the integral of the natural log of the absolute value of f. Uh, plus some constant c, because this happens, this happens to be an indefinite integral. So how does this help us? Well, I know I now know how to do this integral. So let's just do it. i minus j is, well, according to my formula here, it's the natural log of my function appearing in the denominator, because the derivative of this is the derivative of the numerator. So it's going to be the natural log of the absolute value of sine plus cosine. So it's the, uh, well, it's going to be evaluated from 0 to pi over 4. So it's the natural logarithm of sine x plus cosine x in absolute values, and then evaluated from 0 to pi over 4. Well, now it's just a matter of substitution. Well, if I let x be pi over 4, what do I get? Well, this is just the natural log of the absolute value sine pi over 4 plus cosine pi over 4 and then minus the natural log of sine of 0 uh, plus the cosine of 0. So what's this? Well, first of all, I can quite easily uh, drop these absolute values because I know for sure that my, my function is going to be positive. Why do I know that? Well, I can just evaluate this. Well, the natural log of this thing, sine of pi over 4 is just root 2 over 2, or 1 over root 2, which is the same thing, plus root 2 over 2, because root cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, and then subtract, well, sine of 0 is 0, and cosine of 0 is 1, so that's the logarithm of 1, but logarithm of 1, natural logarithm of 1, that is, is just uh, 0. So all I'm left with is this thing. And root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2, well, that's just root 2. So this is the natural log of root 2. And I can simplify this a little bit if I want. That's the natural log of 2 to the power 1 half. And using my uh, logarithm laws, that's just a half of log 2. So what, what have I got in summation? Well, what I've managed to figure out is I've managed to figure out that i plus j is pi over 4, pi divided by 4, and I've figured out that i minus j is a half log 2. Now this is where the fun starts. Well, notice that if, if I add, well first of all, what, what do I want to do? I want to find uh, what the value of i is, right? That's my original integral. So well, notice that I've actually got a pair of simultaneous equations right, in two unknowns, i and j. So I want to try and get rid of j because I'm interested in the value of i. Well, notice that if I take these two equations, let's label them 1 and 2. If I add these equations 1 and 2 together, I'm going to be left with uh, just something in i. Well, what's what happens if I add 1 and 2? Well, i plus j plus i minus j, that's 2i minus 0, because j minus j is 0. So I'm going to get 2i on the left hand side, and on the right hand side, I'm just going to get the addition of these two, or the sum of these two. So that's pi over 4 plus a half log 2. And now I just have to divide by 2 to get my answer. So it turns out that i is pi over 8 plus 1 quarter log 2. And that is the value of my integral. The integral from 0 to pi over 4 of cosine over sine plus cosine is pi over 8 plus, what was it? I think it was a quarter log 2. Isn't that interesting? And this is one of my favorite integrals because the way you go about solving this isn't really what you might expect. I mean, no one really thought that if I let i be this and let j be that and adding those together and subtracting them might actually give us something to work with. And in general, when you deal with integrals like this, uh, there's all sorts of interesting tricks and strategies um, to solve all sorts of complicated integrals like this.
So that's quite cool. Um, so that's all I wanted to show you today. Um, if you like this video, make sure you leave a like, comment and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. Thanks for watching.